Hi guys, it's Horsey Steph, and I am back with part three of Useless, the movie about the barrel racer who lost her mom and is now being taken care of by her aunt and uncle. She got her own horse in the second part of this movie, so in this part we get to see a little bit more about that horse and kind of see how that all plays out for her. I'm so, so excited about this horse she got. I think for Jesse, having a horse is just going to really improve her life. If you guys could go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, that would be really great. And let's go ahead and continue to watch Useless and see how Jesse gets along with her brand new horse. Is she already riding him? It it looks to me, I mean, I'm half blind, so it looks to me like she's walking around bareback on him, hugging his neck, in which case he really doesn't have that much trauma. He's totally fine. But if she was able to get on him bareback in a halter, which I think is what she did, and lay across his neck and hug him, super broke, quiet horse. I mean, what, what do you have to train through there? That's not a problem horse by any means and not a restart. Gotta train him to barrel race, but I mean, that's the easy part, right? God, there's so much dust in that tack room. They clearly haven't been in there for a long time. <laughs> All right, so she is indeed riding this horse bareback. She does have a bridle on, so not a halter like I expected, but yeah, I mean, the horse is great. No real issues there. So very cool that she can get on this horse right away. And it looks like her aunt has brought out a saddle for her to use. And I, I don't want to make this blanket statement, but if they all ride quarter horses regularly, there is an increased chance that the saddle will fit properly. Because quarter horses do at least mostly have the same sort of build. I know it's a vast generalization and you look at my thoroughbreds, I have quite a few. I would never put them in the exact same saddle, but they are all pretty much medium narrow trees. So certainly they are, they are a similar build because they are all thoroughbreds. And I have, you know, some spectrum there. My mare is super, super narrow. My gelding is quite wide, but quarter horse bar is a thing. It's a Western saddle tree size and it does fit a lot of quarter horses. So the saddle will most likely fit and Western saddles, you're more likely to adjust the thickness of the pad to make the saddle really fit. So we'll see, but hopefully, hopefully it works and they do actually pay attention to a fit. Don't just slap it on and say, well, the horse can live with it because I feel like a lot of people do that too. He is cute. Again, super well broke, quiet, nice horse. I mean, he's just loping around like he's done this every day of his life. Great for them. Um, so glad she got such a nice horse. And for 500 bucks, I mean, that's a steal for a horse that is basically at least green broke and quiet and kind. And this actor clearly knows how to ride. Oh, she's gonna go right out of the arena. So I would never, ever, ever canter a horse through the gate out the arena. Um, I don't care if you have a field on the other side of the arena. It just seems like a bad idea. I've had so many gate sour horses in my life. Just imagine you're riding at a place where you can't close that gate and the horse decides to just gallop out of the arena. I mean, that would just be a terrible, terrible thing. And again, I have so much experience with gate sour, arena sour horses that try to leave or are stuck at the gate and don't want to leave the gate. A lot of reasons that's caused by, but I just think in general, it's a bad habit to teach a horse to run out of an arena. I would much rather see them walk or, or I would much rather see them halt and then walk out of the arena, but at minimum break to a walk before leaving. I mean, you really should always walk through a gate. So I don't see why, I don't see why you'd ever need to go faster to walk through a gate. Just like basic thing I would, I would just do just so my horse like knows. Yeah, we walk before we go through gates. It just seems safer, it seems like a better idea. I get her urge to go gallop through this lovely pasture. This is truly such an amazing, beautiful place to ride and 
especially if you haven't ridden for a while, to be able to get on and just, like, go gallop through a field. I mean, it's something I miss all the time because I don't get to do it very often. I see how she couldn't resist that urge. But again, like, she could have walked out the gate and then galloped off through the field. And it's great that they got her a super nice, broke, quiet horse that she was able to just get on and do all this with on the first day. As somebody that had a problem horse in high school, my very first horse took me years to really be able to ride. It's so frustrating, and as a high schooler, like, you don't have the mindset or maturity to really deal with that well. It was really, really tough on me. and. I applaud all of those kids out there with problem horses that have to retrain their horse and take it in stride and do a good job. I was so frustrated and angry and upset that I had to do it for so long. And it's truly, it made me the horse person I was and set me on this whole path for everything I do now and everything I've learned. I'm so grateful for it, but I think it was a lot for me as a high schooler. I think it's a lot for any kids. So. It's really nice that she got something she could hop on right away. Training a horse to do a sport is entirely different than retraining a horse. And that's something I think it's great for kids. It's great for kids to have to put some work in and effort in to compete in their sport and be successful. But problem horses, a whole different thing, takes so much patience and maturity that you just don't have as a child. I'm glad they didn't put her through it. I really thought she was in for a long road of training before she ever got on or was able to do anything really exciting like gallop through a field. Oh my goodness, this horse is so cute! I'm not entirely certain what that is, even after looking and trying to like analyze the video. I'm not 100% sure. It could be an otter pop. That's maybe my best guess because I just can't imagine what else is like in a package like that that a horse would want. Could also be like beef jerky, but I would think most horses wouldn't be interested in beef jerky. This horse is absolutely adorable though. Like so, so cute and he wants whatever this is. I love horses with personality like this one and this one's clearly like just a total ham uh, and also food motivated, but a total ham. Guy is so cute. He's like, just give it to me, please. All right, so I'm not sure why this horse is suddenly freaking out. She's had an amazing ride on him. Today they put a barrel in the arena. This is a cutting horse. He's probably never seen a barrel before in his life, so there should be no reason he's all of a sudden freaked out. I could see if he were a barrel horse and had had trauma involved in barrel racing, he might show this kind of behavior seeing a barrel, but for like quiet, easygoing, simple gelding, I cannot imagine why a barrel being in the arena would cause him to have an absolute panic attack. I'm also really not sure what she's trying to accomplish here. She's really hanging on his mouth like she's making him rear and then causing like a little spin. So really bizarre. I don't understand. I don't understand the basis for his behavior, why it was included in the movie, yet earlier she was able to ride him just fine and why she's approaching this behavior this way as a rider. I mean, I guess I do understand why she's riding the way she is. I'm sure she's hanging on his mouth to create the rear, create the pop, create the spin, but as a rider, it's not how you would respond to the situation. She's really hanging on this horse's mouth, which I imagine is what's causing him to be so upset. I don't know why she needs to hang on his mouth. She's running barrels. She's not doing like advanced collection work. So she shouldn't need him that short in the first place. If she was able to ride him and let him just go, I would be teaching the horse the pattern by walking or trotting it on a loose rein and then cantering it on a loose rein. You never need to choke up on a barrel horse, even when you're doing more advanced training and teaching them to really bend around the barrel and get in tight and hug it. You don't need to choke up on them. You obviously do need them to respond to the rain, but this horse looked like he responded to rain just fine as long as you don't hang on his mouth. Again, totally unnecessary that she's triggering this behavior from him. All right, so I assume slowing to a walk and walking around that barrel allowed her to have a little more control of his shoulder and give him a better idea of how she wants him to go around the barrel. 
obviously with barrel racing, a lot of it is training the horse what to do and they kind of an autopilot go around that barrel. You don't really have time at that speed to micromanage every footfall and explain to them exactly how they need to go around a barrel to do it well. Makes sense to me that you would break it down at a walk and really show them where to put their feet and then eventually you build up speed and keep reminding them this is exactly how you do the barrel every single time. Because it is a sport based on repetition. You're doing the same barrel, same pattern every single time. The space in between the barrels can vary, but you're still gonna turn around the barrels the same way every time. So that that seems very logical and she let go of the rein just a little, gave him a little more space to move and he's a lot less upset about that now. And there she cantered the barrel and now she's galloping home. I'm not really sure why she cantered that barrel because again he's green and she's just showing him how to do it at this point but maybe she just felt like cantering it and seeing how he did at the canter totally valid option. I mean, she didn't ruin anything by cantering that, but I do think she needs to slow down, do it at the walk, a little bit of trot, and then get to the canter and just really show him where to put his feet before she starts cantering and galloping this pattern. Because obviously he doesn't know how to do a barrel racing turn. And as a cutter, he's going to be really good at going, you know, side to side. But in barrel racing, you need to gallop up and then drop the shoulder and spin around the barrel. And that's not something a cutter is ever gonna have learned how to do because it's not something a cutter ever is supposed to do. They really need to stay balanced and centered and straight so that they can cut sideways. Barrel racers, to be able to go around that barrel at speed, they really need to be able to lay their shoulder down going around that barrel. So that is a very unique thing that not a lot of sports ask for that she will have to train this horse to do. And you wanna train it at slower speeds before you're going it at a gallop and trying to get them to do that properly. I don't know why she ran him in the fence there, could have easily made a circle and slowed him down on a circle instead of like teaching him he run straight into the fence. I, generally kind of a problem I have with barrel racers that they do run into the fence or like stop uncontrollably a lot of times. It's not that hard to teach your horse how to stop after they gallop. So again, he is rearing and kind of throwing a fit and I'm not sure what she is doing to trigger that and they cut right to it without kind of showing him going into that behavior. So I assume she kind of sets him up to do that and then holds him and pops, pops him with her leg or something to get him to rear and spin. For the sake of this plot line, I'm not really sure what's triggering that behavior or why it comes up seemingly randomly when he's fine 99% of the time. And looks relaxed and confident 99% of the time too. So now she's going back and just doing this pattern over and over again at the walk, I assume perfecting how he's going. That seems like a fantastic way of training a barrel horse. And again, I do not barrel race. I am not a Western rider in general. So I don't actually know how to train barrels, but that logically is what I would assume you do to train a barrel horse. because regardless of what discipline you ride or tack you ride in training horses is about breaking things down into small individual steps so that the horse understands each step and then putting it all together slowly over time so you have a confident happy horse that's ready to perform its job and now she's doing it at the counter and he is getting in a lot tighter than he was in the beginning so seems like she's making progress already but don't forget quiet hands make for a quiet horse. I love that. I absolutely love that. Quiet hands make for a quiet horse. Absolutely. The number one way people mess up horses is getting in their face and getting busy. And exactly what was happening to her earlier, right? Every time he started doing the rearing and spinning, she was choked up on the reins. Give your horse their head, give them space. You can teach them to accept contact and accept pressure in the mouth but once you start grabbing and holding, you're just gonna create problems. I hope you guys enjoyed that segment of Useless. Make sure you check out the description box below to see all the other parts of Useless. They will all be linked in there as I go through the movie. I was so excited to see that Jessie had a quiet, well-trained horse she was able to jump on right away and have fun with. I think that was just so, so important for her and something that really is going to make her life a little bit better and just give her something to distract herself from the fact that she lost everything else in her life with the passing of her mom. 
So I'm excited to see how they continue to progress as this movie goes on. And I will see you guys all next time with another part of Useless. If you guys didn't already know, I do do movie reactions every Thursday and Saturday, posted at 5 p.m. Fingers crossed, because sometimes my internet has other ideas and it just doesn't quite work out. But that is my schedule, so if you stay tuned, Thursdays and Saturdays, we will be continuing to go through Useless until we see how it ends. I hope you guys have enjoyed this segment of Useless. If you did, please leave a comment down below. Let me know that you liked it. It would mean so much to me to hear from you guys. And I will see you all later. Bye.